Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So this is the first official project of IoT Push where we're gonna be controlling the tank over the cloud. So basically you could be on 3G and while this tank is in your house, you could basically control it. However, uh, what you'll be able to do with this is basically control anything else that runs on a brushed motor. So it works in the same way. You just have this controller and then you just put the motors to whatever it might be you want to control. In later videos, we'll be adding video so you can actually just drive around your house while looking through your house, which is going to be pretty interesting. So first of all, let's talk about some of the components here and I'll also show you it working in action right now. Uh, we're going to be using one of these L298 and these are a $3 uh, brushed motor driver. So we're going to need one of those. We're also going to need an ESP8266 so I'll have those linked down below the V1 preferably but if you have the V2 that's also fine my custom designed PCB actually this is optional you can do it without which I'll show you how to do right now uh, this makes our life so much easier and I've broken out most of the pins as you can tell right here you just plug it in and you're basically good to go and we'll take a closer look at the PCB later because it's not a must but it'll be nice to have because you'll be able to put this anywhere I know it's huge and there's a couple reasons for that and we'll get into those later on so let's see it in action really quickly. I am going to plug in the battery. I'll give it about three seconds for it to connect on my Wi-Fi. While it does that, I'll go ahead and show you that I am not on Wi-Fi, no Bluetooth is enabled, and I am on 4G right now. And we're gonna be using IoT Push. It's available on iOS and Android. It's an app and system I've designed for us uh, to play around with. So right now, as you can tell, I've already registered it and I'll show you how to do that in a bit. But you see we have the tank and I'm just gonna lift this up and you can see how quick that responds. And just like that, you see how quickly that thing actually responds. So I'll show you a little bit further here. Now due to so many electronics around me, I do get interference here. And there's a bit of a delay sometimes here, which is something normal because everything is so close to each other. I have so many different Wi-Fi things here. Pretty responsive as you can tell. So just like that, you can see how, the, how responsive this actually is it's insanely quick and this is on 4g so let's go ahead and get started here the sponsor of today's video is pcb way if you have any projects that you want to get done and or assembled then pcb way is going to be a great choice i've been using them for the past couple years and by far one of the best services i've used whether you're a hobbyist and or professional alike so definitely check the links down below here i do have a github repository with the instructions so you can go ahead and follow along and uh, I also just created a Discord channel for IoT Push projects and the whole app itself. If you have any problems or any issues, you can just go there and just write me and I'll help you debug whatever problem you have. Now, before we begin, you have to make sure you have MicroPython installed on your ESP8266. And I did a video on that a while ago just to get you guys ready to have your environment set up. So every other project will just be smooth sailing from there. Now we're going to want to grab our token. We'll come back to this in a bit here. So let's go ahead and take a look at the diagram setup because let's just say you don't have the P the PCB and you want to do something like this temporarily. Um, this is how you'd want to go ahead and set this up. This is an ESP8266 uh, microcontroller connected to the motor driver here. Now it's very important to take something into consideration before you start connecting or actually before you even boot it. These two pin headers right here, they have jumpers. You want to make sure you remove those. That's one of the most important things. And another thing, when everything is connected and you want to flash your ESP8266, make sure you remove the 5 volt jumper. Very important you do that. Um, or else you could fry something. So make sure this is removed, this is removed, and this is removed. And once you flash it, you can go ahead and flash it. And once you're done flashing and you want to actually start using it, then you remove the USB and you put the jumper for the 5 volts back. Like a little black piece that comes off and goes back on. And you want to make sure you do that because this will allow the voltage to go through and power this guy. But if you have USB here and you have a battery here and yeah, it could be pretty, you could even probably damage your PC. So just keep an eye out on that. Just keep that removed until you're ready to plug in the battery. And here will be the motors on mine. Sometimes you might find that the motors are going the wrong way. All you have to do is just uh, flip these two wires, kind of like on our ESCs. Uh, so you just flip the positive and negative of the motors. I usually have mine, the red wire of the motors on the bottom here and here. And I think hopefully that should get 90% of you in the same configuration perfectly. If not, you just flip those wires until it's moving in the correct direction. And again, 2S battery here. All right, so once we have that configured and set up, let's go ahead and grab our token. So we're going to go to create control here. So I'm going to open in a new tab and you should be logged in. If you're not, obviously you just uh, log in 
in one of these. Now also make sure you log in the same method on your phone or your account will freeze and you have to email me to unfreeze it for you because the logic right now between a normal registered account and a Google account kind of mixes everything up. So I'm just gonna log back in. Okay, so if you don't know where this location is, it's under manage control. So manage sensors control, not control sensors. Uh, this will allow you to control through the web panel later. I haven't implemented that yet, but you'll be able to control through the application right now. And here we add the ID. It's very important to take note of the ID. And um, once you create an ID, well, let's just say we created it with a space here, just like that. And then as you can tell, it added an underscore. So always copy the ID from here, which is gonna go into your code. So we're gonna keep this page open. We're gonna need this, and we're also gonna need this. All right, once you have everything set up on or connected to your ESP8266, you're gonna take the link down below, which is the GitHub link and we're gonna open VS Code. Now, if you don't have VS Code, I've done the video to set everything up, so make sure you watch that. That'll be linked down below as well. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna to go to Clone Repository, and we're gonna go ahead and just add that link, and then we're gonna choose our folder where we want it to save. So I'm gonna choose this folder, which is called Tutorials Tank on my D drive, and select Repository. Now we're gonna wait for it on the bottom left. It is actually uh, downloading, so we're just gonna wait for that to finish right here. And once it's complete, we just go ahead and click open. So once it's open, we want to go over to the MicroPython projects and we're going to go to ESP8266. We're going to go into the tank V1 and we are going to grab the ESP8266 main right here. And once we click on it, then it should open up just like this. Now it's very important to install the, the libraries that we're going to need, which is the web sockets here. And the way to do that is with these commands. I've even set that up for you. So um, if you followed along in the previous setup part, then we should be able to do this just like this. Make sure you know what COM port your ESP8266 is connected to. So we do that by, so we can just click Windows key and then type device and we should get the device manager here. And we go to ports right here, COM right there. And we can see mine is on COM port eight. So uh, make sure you modify these to whatever your COM port is. As you can tell mine's COM port eight, COM port eight, eight and eight. So the first thing we wanna do is we want to just grab this one. Uh, but make sure you modify again your, your COM port and we're just gonna paste it. So this is gonna make the folder. Now I should probably get an error because it says directory already exists because it's already on there. Uh, so whenever you try to create a new directory. So let's go ahead and grab the next one over. So it's gonna be a pretty big one. So we're just gonna go hold, hold shift. So we're gonna grab this one, which actually creates the, puts the file inside the library. And we're gonna click enter and just wait for that to finish. If you don't get anything, that's perfect. That means it flashed correctly. And we're gonna go ahead and grab this one. And we're just gonna paste that in as well. So this last command here, we execute only when we finish editing the file. So let's go ahead and edit this file here. I just have some more information. So what we're gonna wanna do is you wanna put your Wi-Fi's name here, case sensitive. So if it has a capital, make sure you put the capital, whatever it might be. Also your Wi-Fi password. Next, we need to add our token, which is found right here. So we go ahead and just copy that. And we can just go ahead and paste it here. Make sure you don't share your token with anybody. So there we go. And now we just put the ID. So the ID is just gonna be whatever it is that we created down here. And it's very important that you have created it in Manage Sensors Control because it's a control application. And I'm just gonna go ahead and grab that. And we're just gonna paste it, it's already there. And uh, make sure case sensitivity does matter here. And that's it, we don't have to do anything else. You could go ahead and take a look at the code if you want. Uh, it's very simple, it just sets up the motors, turn left, turn right. And um, yeah, if you know a little bit of Python, you could actually modify this to do whatever your heart pleases. So once we do that, we're just gonna scroll back up and we're gonna grab our main. So this is gonna say Ampy, we use port eight, put the tank project ESP8266 tank as main PY. So let's go ahead and flush that. <clears throat> Mine will not work because um, I didn't put the Wi-Fi password yet. So I'll do that off camera. And just like that, you should be good to go. Now there's a way to debug as well. Uh, and the way to do that is actually, let's go ahead and make that here for you guys. So we're just gonna do that. And we're gonna say uh, debug, debug here, uh, which means you just see if there's any problem. So we're just gonna remove this main. So now what we can do is we can actually uh, go ahead and uh, run this command here. Now again, nothing has power, only the USB. And I made sure I removed that five volt pin that I showed you earlier on the, on the motor driver. So we're gonna run this. And just to double check we're running, it seems like we are running. And I'm just gonna click the reset here. Okay, that resetted me. Okay, that's great. 
All right, as you can tell, I ran it and it gave me my local IP, which is great. It's connecting to IoT push. And if you get this, that means it's just a timeout because when you do run, if within like 30 seconds, if it doesn't send any other message, then basically um, it just times out. So we're just gonna run that again. And you could use Arduino here, uh, IDE instead, so we can see that it's working. So now what you wanna do is you wanna go ahead to the IoT push application, which is what I'm doing currently. And we're gonna go into RC controls from the side menu. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and click run, then tap on the tank here. So I've added a bit more commands to actually show you that we're connected. So we wait for that. So now we know it's connected. We're gonna go ahead and connect. Once you connect, it doesn't really show anything, but now if you look, we can see that it says move forward, then stop. Move left, stop. Move right, stop. We could actually see that. So that's actually going over 3G, hopping back in there, telling it what to do. Obviously, because we have no battery connected, it's not moving, but now we know it's working 100% here. And again, it timed out, so don't worry about the timeout here if you do see some information. So I kept that print debug information for you there. So once you finish flashing, let me show you on the bench what you need to do so you don't fry your thing. And now once that's set up and you have everything configured correctly, what we want to do is remove the USB, obviously, grab just one of the jumpers and make sure we enable the five volt jumper because this will give five volts to this to boot this guy on. So we're just gonna plug that in right here. All right, so now I'm putting it in, as you can tell, and that's in. And then next, we can go ahead and power this guy. Now you can power with this board, if you do get this board, you can power the XT60. You can even put an 18650 on the bottom, which I'll make a separate video for this board later. Um, but I'll have it also linked down below, which you could actually order it directly from PCBWay right now. And we're just gonna set that up and we're gonna go ahead and plug in our battery beautifully. Everything is working as expected. So this is app is available both on iOS and Android. It's all free of charge. I've designed it for all of us and we'll be adding cameras and other stuff on this project. And I really hope you guys like this video. And if you do, please consider joining my Patreon. I do have a lot of crazy content upcoming, such as how to make your own Python drivers for the on-screen displays and the barometers and a lot of really useful, crazy uh, low-level stuff if you're interested in that. So any support goes an absolute long way because these videos don't get any views for some reason. So yeah, and <clears throat> so that would be super awesome. And everything's linked down below. They are affiliated. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.